Some of the things that people want to know when they start to look at our partner strategy is what do I need to know before I invest? So there's kind of a, a quick overview, I guess, five things that you really need to know before you start investing. Number one, know that what you have is not yours and return to God what he asked. Malachi 3.10 says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this and see, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be enough room to store it. So this is the one thing that I know of in the scriptures that God says that we get to test him on. So I encourage you to take advantage of that challenge. In God's economy, the best way to be trusted with more is to be faithful with the little that you've been given. The second thing that you need to know is that your bases are covered. So Proverbs 21, 20 says, precious treasure and oil are in the, in the wise man's dwelling, but a foolish man devours it. So you need to make sure that you have made provisions to protect your family Um, One way to do that is with life insurance. If you haven't accumulated a lot of assets, if your family is dependent on your income, you want to make sure that you have um, protected their future by using some types of insurance until you've accumulated enough assets to take care of them. First Timothy 5, 8 tells us that whoever neglects to provide for their own household is worse than an unbeliever. So I believe that this applies to using your God-given talents and abilities to earn a living to support your family. And it applies to using resources that you have to provide for them should you die earlier than you had planned to. The third thing that you need to know is to know your plan to get out of um, unnecessary debt or avoid it altogether if you can. That's an even better strategy. Proverbs 22 tells us that the borrower is slave to the lender. And there are so many scriptures that tell us, that encourage us to be content. Being One way to be content is to live within your means. Don't get overextended. You know, there are um, good uses of debt to finance a home. Most people don't have enough money, especially when they start their own family, to just go out and pay cash for a home. And there's a really a uh, debate about whether or not that's a great thing to, to do anyway. Um, but you should take whatever steps necessary to avoid unnecessary debt. Be very, very cautious about getting into um, school debt, uh, debt for college. If you're, if you're heading in that direction, um, consider what kind of career that you want to have, what the um, realistic uh, potential for income is from that desired career, and have a plan to get that debt paid back in a very, very timely manner, I would say within five years from the date that you um, graduate. Um, make sure that, you know, if you're, if you want to be a teacher, which is a very, very noble calling, um, you know, you, you have to know that you're not going to earn a rich man's wage doing that. You will earn probably a lot of eternal rewards in teaching the next generation, but your financial pay will, um, you know, will be below average, I'll just, I'll just say. But if you know that your um, income is going to be within a certain range, you know, if you want to be a teacher, don't go out and incur $200,000 worth of college debt because it's going to be a burden and a taskmaster for you uh, for the rest of your financial future. So live within your means, be content with what you have. Number four is no what you are doing, and what you are trying to accomplish. So spend some time researching different strategies. uh, Spend some time knowing what your goals are. So if your income is in a certain range and you're looking down the road to retirement, say your retirement planning, uh, have a good idea of what that lifestyle is going to cost. Proverbs 15, 22 says that without counsel, plans fail, but with many advisors, they succeed. So if you're a person who doesn't uh, find financial planning very interesting or you struggle with some of the concepts, consider employing a, a professional. 
you know, do your homework there as well. Uh, make sure that you are equally yoked in what you believe about values-based investing and, um, you know, seek counsel accordingly. Proverbs 22, uh, 21.5 says that the plans of the diligent lead surely to abundance, but everyone who is hasty comes only to poverty. So, you know, take your time. For those, there are uh, lots of people who can um, navigate through financial planning on their own, who can do the research, who like to learn, who enjoy learning about the topic of finances. And I think those people are a good fit for, for our strategy. Number five, know your limits. Proverbs thirteen eleven says, wealth gained hastily will dwindle, but whoever gathers little by little will increase it. So one of the things that you really have to, um, to be able to do in investing is to be disciplined. You know, you don't have to be, um, the sharpest pencil in the box to have a good long-term investment strategy, but you do have to be very disciplined. You have to keep greed in check and don't be tempted by getting rich quick. Um, don't let those motives overtake your honorable motives to be a good provider for your family. Um, you have to know that risk and return are very positively correlated, which means that in the investment world, the more risk you take, the more return should accompany that on a long-term basis. But with return, as return goes higher, so does risk. Risk is measured by volatility. That means that the value of your investments can vary widely. They can go up a lot. They can go down a lot if you're aggressive. And I think that you have to be aggressive, um, almost no matter what situation you're in. Um, and what I mean by that, be, people think about being aggressive as taking market risk. It's not always just about market risk. If you can tolerate volatility, let's say that you have an eight to 10 year time horizon and um, you can handle seeing the value of your investments temporarily go down 10, 20 percent or even more. Just focus on getting money into good investments and don't pay much attention to the short-term changes in value, whether it's positive or negative. If you know that seeing decreases in value of 10% or more would cause you to abandon even a well-thought-out plan, you will have to be aggressive in a different way. You will have to be aggressive in the amount of money that you are saving because in order to avoid that volatility, you're going to have to um, expect a lower return. If you're you know, that those first two points really apply to people who are in the accumulation phase trying to get to a goal. Once you've reached your goal and you are, say, in retirement and you're using your savings to provide or to replace your uh, supplement or replace your income, you have to know that at that point in time, volatility is not your friend. So you really have to adapt your strategy to being more focused on Avoiding downside volatility, uh, you know, uh, um, doing some things to protect your portfolio from going down a whole lot. And you have to be more focused on that rather than in capturing every bit of potential upside. Once you understand these concepts, you're ready to get started building your portfolio and implementing the strategy to defund darkness that we give you here at Financial Issues.